Hi, welcome to the Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena channel. I'm your host, Tamara Calder-Richardson, and this is part two, and we have our guest that's talking about super relativity. This is uh, Masters of Reality, his book, and that would be Mark Ferentino, and he was just explaining about his research on the unified field theory. And we were just about to get ready to go into anti-gravity, how, how spaceships work, as well as time travel. So let me bring him back on. Okay, Mark. <laughs> we're oh. here. <laughs> so you want to pull, I'll pull that back up and you want to explain the last part you left off, just kind of wrap it up really quickly. I'm yeah. yeah. One, one and then move on to the next thing. Okay. Perfect. All right, here we go. Okay, so this slide just basically says energy and motion equals mass, and I demonstrate that. This is to help you recognize the pattern I recognize. Uh, if we want to get mass, if we want to get gravity, uh, something has got to be in motion, a force or an energy. When these things get put in motion, acceleration, see in these famous equations, speed of light squared, you get a mass. There's a pattern clearly here. Mass comes from particles in motion or a force in motion, a field in motion. Magnetic force will cause the small electrostatic fields to move. Uh, the, the motion of a magnetic force will cause small electrostatic fields to move. Law of induction, electromagnetism. So my law, super relativity law of gravitation says, the accelerated motion of fundamental unbalanced electromagnetic charges, the quarks mainly, uh, will cause gravity mass to emerge as a field of force, bending contraction of space, cause things moving around it in a spherical or circular pattern, cause a contraction. Space is made to contract in and around the particle according to the Arafat paradox mechanism. So let's move on to the next one. In each case, the causal nexus of the phenomena listed above is the same. The key linking factors come from the three Einstein discoveries. The equivalence principle that says somehow gravity and acceleration are equivalent. What I'm showing you is that acceleration of particles uh, causes gravity by contraction. That's the mechanical link that links uh, acceleration to gravity and mass. So that's the final part. That, that is the part that Einstein was trying to prove. And I believe he was aware of it. He just, in his time, didn't have the, the, the uh, knowledge of the quarks to be able to make the formula that I did, which really comes from Newton's time. So the contraction of length as a result of the increase in velocity relative to the ether. That's where the whole idea comes from of the contraction of length. If you contract length, if you compress space, its mass is going to increase. Uh, its density is going to increase. And this is exactly what we see when a gravitational field uh, happens. Yes. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, the path to the unification of the primary forces, the electrostatic charge field, the magnetic field, and the gravitational field. We now know that the electrostatic field causes a slip wave within particles that causes motion, which causes the magnetic field to result. As the charge moves, the magnetic field occurs around the charge. It rotates, the space rotates. Then when we get an unbalanced fundamental charge, it moves in a uniform, circular, accelerated manner. That's the key. Circular mm -hmm. manner of mo motion is accelerated mm -hmm. constantly. And that is what uh, I discovered comes about as a result of the quarks moving in this pattern, the trefoil pattern. This is what holds the neutron and proton, the quarks, together, not the strong nuclear force. That's a mythical explanation. It'll never be right. It doesn't even really make sense. Mm -hmm. This does. You can see this is a trefoil knot the simplest knot that you can have. Uh, and it clearly shows how the particles <clears throat> form into this real structure, this elect it's an electromagnetic field 
that's literally vibrating. If you could touch it, you could feel the hum in it as you ran your finger across it. Really? Yes. If you were, if it were this big, you would feel as as the the particles are moving rapidly at ninety nine percent the speed of light. So that is the explanation for both the strong force and um, gravity because not only is this thing i'll hold it up again not only is this thing doing this but it's spinning and rolling right it's which, moving which, at time right moving when then turns this structure into a rotating sphere a rapidly rotating sphere and that's perfect it will generate a collapsed field all around that sphere uh the diameter of the circumference of that edge of the sphere all pointing in space will be pulled toward that spherical because area. Because of the motion of the way it's spinning. Yeah, it's the, the, it's the okay. air and fest paradox. Here's what I, I want people to be able to see. This, see according this. to my remote viewing, my mind experiments, <laughs> is what the electron looks like if you were at the back of the electron. This... As it moves through space, it causes this spinning. And you can see the space mm -hmm. around here is going to rotate around the charge as it moves. I can't make it any clearer than that. Wow. Now, here is the, the vortex pressure gradient that I call the slip wave. So here, the electron, this is the front of the electron. The rotation starts very small very small, getting larger, getting larger. As it does this, space is stretching more and more. A pressure gradient forms from here to here. It becomes less and le less dense and uh, the pressure bulging out uh, because of the expansion of the space that you see here. And this causes it to be like a bubble, a bubble in the ocean rising through the medium. Only the medium in the ocean is the pressure gradient, which causes the motion. In this example, the pressure gradient is inside of the particle, not in the medium. The medium is a, a flat Euclidean geometry, except when it gets close to the particle. It gets bent into this configuration. So this particle, this backside of the particle, is actually pushing the particle forward through space forever, perpetually. Just what is exactly needed in order for the universe to work. This wow. is the foundational principle of reality. Without it, this is the breath of life for all of us, for all beings and all creatures and all structures, stars, planets. Without this ability, if particles couldn't move, everything would disappear. You wouldn't see planets. You wouldn't see stars. You wouldn't see anything. It all comes about because of this slip wave um, bias a spatial bias field very important so let me ask you this is this is this the functionality of all life like nature you go out things are always moving the leaves the all particles us everything in it and would that also be you're talking about the hum and and i've experienced that hum of earth you know like yes because it's vibrations yeah, there's vibrations at all levels. Uh, planets, I'm sure, make, uh, and, and they've been heard. Uh, they're called elf waves, extreme low frequency waves that come from the planets. You could build little uh, AM radios and tune them to these extremely low frequency waves, and you can hear the planets singing. Uh, and I'm sure that's something akin to what psychics and mediums also can sense and 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 in this universe has a uh, a frequency to it the atoms have a very definitely frequency to them because of this motion you're going to have frequencies you're going to have wavelengths because of this motion without it you don't have any of that the universe dissipates into nothingness if particles don't move it's all about motion within space so really is space, you know, space as we think of it, is it is it really silent or does it have a hum to it? I have heard that each 
physical reality, reality each universe has a, a level or a frequency. And I would think it would be associated with the what I showed you earlier, the quarks and that frequency of at that rate that it's going. Uh, that might be it's a hum that we could not hear. Right. It's not an audible hum, but you could sense it and hear it psychically. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so the whole universe really is vibrating at this frequency because the atoms you know this is going to be projecting out in all directions from every atom and every <laughs> neutron and proton in in the universe so that's our rate of speed and it's determined by the density of space if it increases the speed gets goes slower this universe gets heavier kind of it's denser you know how else to explain it uh, and so, yeah, I would say there's an association of, of frequency to every uh, dimension and uh, universal structure. It would ha I would imagine it would have to be, which goes to say, you know, it makes me look at sound and shapes differently, that they're not just flat or 2D, that they could be dimensions or portals, or they could be whole languages. They could be keys to things. They could be, they have, they could have structure. Well, sound is, is a pressure wave. See, we're back to pressure again. Sound yeah. is a pressure wave through space. The patterns are there. They've just not been recognized by modern day physicists. It's you okay. guys that recognize more of the patterns than so you can psychically uh, connect to these things and feel them and obtain yeah. knowledge directly, not through mathematics and logically thinking and doing all this. This is a higher form of intelligence than uh, the basic physicist would ever dream of using. This is direct infusion of knowledge through connecting with the other side. Universal uh, consciousness, too. Yeah. I mean, not just mediumship and that level. But Mediums should be working with physicists and chemists and uh, biologists because you guys can give us insights. I intend to work with you. To do stuff like this because i got a lot of questions and since <laughs> the other side is willing to answer those some of the ideas i have can be checked out and can be researched further and we have done this you and i together already and it's worked out in the stargate record. well it, yeah i mean but it was kind of a surprise i think to both of us and we're on this whole thing and that's going to be on another episode but yeah, I think that um, when you talk about these higher level frequencies and so forth, uh, people are attuned like musical instruments. And I think especially people that, you know, because I've had so many near death experiences, I think I lost my filters in between etheric bodies. So I just tap into this and not just family members or people, like but the higher levels. Why? I don't know. And I'm not really trying. But yeah, it's all part of this universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and the Stargate that was channeled through to me for you and some other stuff, which is, it, it, it touches me that they care and see what you're doing, what I'm doing. They care still and they want to assist. I mean, it's a, it really is. Uh, and you get to see how we're all connected. I mean, to me, it is really beautiful. So show us this here because I, I know you've shown me this. It's very cool. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, is to demonstrate. Basically, what I'm saying is that in an elongated craft, uh, the cigar-shaped craft, there's going to be um, circular rings all along the length of the craft. And they'll be turning on and off depending on which way you want to go, left to right, right to left. And it'll sort of propel the, the UFO in any direction. Of course, there's steering coils and the front and back of the ufo as well mm -hmm. but in this you could see this ufo you can eventually see that it it's scanning the coils are being turned on and off and you can see it the craft uh luminescing and glowing indicating that the coils are turning on like i have in this picture where you can see two of the coils are turned on really hard and you see the sweeping back and forth Mm -hmm. This craft is actually moving back and forth, left mm -hmm. and right, as, right. It, as it changes the direction of the 
the magnets as they're turning on and off. Mm -hmm. You can't see it because he's beamed in so close, but this thing is actually jittering back and forth. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't know they were being photographed and they did this so that we could we could determine how you know give us a clue yeah. you can turn them on hard in a sequence and hold it so you could have weak magnetic field at the front and a really powerful one at the back and intermediate ones all along the way and you just do that snap you know because you've got control of the electrons in these coils that are instantaneous so it's immediately as you introduce the currents into the coils okay. in one fell swoop this thing will go from not moving to going at an enormous speed, tens of thousands of miles an hour or a second, instantaneously. I'm it's sure some UFOs have the interdimensional technology. That, that I'm just describing the entry level people. Right. Got it. <laughs> so people the, who are first starting out in interstellar space travel. So the so when it was hovering, and hovering is basically using that a slip wave when it's hovering it's using if it's a use if it has an anti-gravity field it's got to be using magnets i can conceive of no other way to do it there's only the three primary fields of force that we've discovered really uh not counting the the mythical strong and weak forces which are really particle interactions and not forces so that has to be reclassified but you know that's an argument and a discussion for another day all i've seen is the electrostatic field, the magnetic field, and the gravitational field. And if that starship or that yeah, ship is using is floating in space, it's using an intense magnetic field. Time and time and time again, when we check, we find evidence that the UFO is emitting magnetic fields. When I read about it as a child, the uh, UFOs, the uh, Project Blue Book, they would bring a magnometer to the site, the landing site of the UFO the next day or the, whenever they could get there. They did measurements, magnetic measurements, and they found things like the grass was magnetized. Evidence, rock solid okay. evidence that they're okay. using magnetism okay. over okay. and over again. And the Belgian triangle that was photographed by a man using a, the old timey um, cameras that still used film, Physicists analyzed the film, discovered that the emulsion was magnetized. It takes an immense magnetic field at that distance to magnetize that emulsion. Time and time again, physicists look at UFOs and they see bands like we were seeing there. Those bands indicate more than likely polarization caused by the magnetic field. Evidence keeps mounting. UFOs flying over cars causes them causes them to stall. That's, That's the induction. Yeah, the magnetism. The magnetic field interfering with the electronics of the car. The evidence is overwhelming if you just believe it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I'm I, I'm totally like Mulder. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The truth is out there. It is totally out there. <laughs> So let's get back toward the unification of motion is it's motion within space. That, that's all I'm saying in this slide. The torsion field causes the Coulomb force, which is electrostatic charge. It causes the motion of magnet. Uh, that motion causes magnetism. And when these two do accelerated motion, you cause gravity. Mm -hmm. So it's a repetition of what I said earlier. So the pattern includes that lead to the discovery of the central cause of mass. Uh, basically, in each and every case, you have a force, a charge in motion, a force in motion. Lorentz transformation is a velocity and speed of light. Ma uh, mass is, is altered by that. In each and every case, uh, inertial mass is the cause of, of motion, uh, of um, an increase in mass. Motion of an ex a charge causes the increase of mass. This, mm -hmm. this verifies the equivalence principle, which says somehow gravity and acceleration are the same thing. Now I'm saying that acceleration of a charged particle causes gravity. There's the link. There's the mechanical link that Einstein was looking for. It's 
It's so simple. I don't, it should have been discovered 70 years ago, in my opinion. Well, but they stopped yeah. looking. They stopped looking in this area. They stopped this type of theory, this type of thinking. So what I used here is this little formula. I wrote a program. I constructed a program that uses a set of formulas. And basically, I was able to achieve the prediction of the proton and neutron masses by nothing more than quarks moving as quasi-rigid disks, which is an approximation of this motion here inside of the neutron and proton. This motion leads to a spinning spherical motion, which causes a contraction of space. And I used this formula to verify it, and it checked out. I got the exact masses for the uh, neutron and um, the proton. And I wrote a paper with all this evidence in it, like a lawyer would make a case. Mm -hmm. I made a case for the ether, made a case for the motion of particles causing the, uh, the increase of mass due to their motion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's as simple as can be. It's straightforward. Uh, it makes sense. Um, and that's that paper, along with my other paper, establishing this quark, the speed of quarks, which I used in order to write the second paper, is on ResearchGate. You can read it for yourself and verify that this is true. This is the it. This is always the way it's going to be. Nothing is going to change the truth. It's just up to us to wake up to this and realize and understand this is true. If we do this, we will evolve to a higher level. So here I'm just going to show you what I was just saying. It's just a quick little video. And here's the, the golden spiral. This thing is spinning like this. I show it stationary here. There's okay. the two quarks moving faster and faster until they literally form into this trefoil knot structure. Got it. So you get that idea. Uh -huh. So now you got another one where basically. And that's your logo. That's my logo, super relativity. Everything is in there that makes sense. Now I'm saying here it is spinning, right? And then, you know, it's, it's also going to roll a little bit. This is not what I desire. What I really wanted the guy to do was make this thing spin so fast and rotate so fast and roll so fast, you just see a sphere. And basically, he kind of approximates this towards the end. Yeah, it's a sphere. And the contraction of space occurs at this area right here, being pulled inward. Here's another demonstration of what space looks like so it's being bent inwards it has this cradling it almost yeah. uh, forming around it that's what i was talking about earlier like the grid and then it forms around and you get a gravitational field that's non-polarized okay it fits it works this system works if gravity is a contraction of space then anti-gravity must be an expansion of space that makes sense doesn't it <laughs> Since we know how to use the motion of the electromagnetic field to create a gravitational field, we now know, we must now figure out a way to reverse the process and cause an expansion of space by using the motion of electromagnetic fields. That started my quest to look for how to do that, which I described earlier somewhat in being the slip wave. Yes. Uh, the electromechanical device that can be used to create an anti-gravity field is the electron. The electron in a specific type of motion when moving through the wires. It's not really as accelerated. It's more linear. And, and this will allow the electron to generate more anti-gravity than gravity. The key to getting an electron to make anti-gravity fields to get to move in a non-accelerated way. Normally, when an electron moves in an orbital, it has angular momentum, and therefore it is accelerating the entire time it moves within the orbital. In this case, the electron does generate a small gravitational field. Makes sense, and that's what we see. Hovercraft. <laughs> that's it. 
<laughs> in order to make the electron generate any gravity fool, we must make the electron move in a linear, non-accelerated motion. This can easily be done by creating a current flow of electrons in a conductor, an electromagnet. Whenever a current flows within a conductor, the electron flow, the electrostatic lines of force created by establishing a voltage. When the electrons move in this way, they only create a magnetic field. Michael Faraday established the laws of induction. Thank you, Mr. Faraday. Magnet, magnetism causes space to stretch. All that is needed to create an anti-gravity field is an intense magnetic field. And we, I went over with you the evidence that we've seen that certainly says, seems to demonstrate that's exactly what's happening. I'm just explaining now why a magnetic field causes an anti-gravity field. In the early days, I wondered, I used to wonder, somehow either the magnetic field causes the anti-gravity field or it's a byproduct of it. Eventually, I eliminated the latter and said, it must be the cause of the anti-gravity field. And then I had to go about working through how that could happen. And it took decades to do that. A magnetic field is a torsional reaction to moving charge. There is a direct correspondence between the magnetic field and the anti-gravity field. The stronger the magnetic field, the stronger the anti-gravity field becomes. Space is made to bend in the opposite direction, not inward, but outward. Now there's a pressure pushing outward from this, this magnetic field. The anti-gravity field is what I call the inverse hyperbolic field. When the magnetic field is put into motion or made to rotate, the anti-gravity effect is amplified. And, and I'm going to work on that. Uh, the magnetic force in motion causes a very strong expansion of space. Additional benefits coming from the magnetic field. The magnetic field creates the anti-gravity field. The inverse hyperbolic field can be used to shield from the effects of gravity. We can build a hovercraft. The gravity, the gradient magnetic field forms a gradient anti-gravity field, and this is what I call the slip wave. The slip wave is a pressure gradient field that can be used for propulsion. I believe it is the most common mode of propulsion used by UFOs. The intense magnetic field causes space to stretch and causes a drop in spatial density. The drop in spatial density causes a corresponding drop in the permittivity and permeability of space, which is vitally important to break the light speed barrier. This allows space vessel, which is inside of the slip wave, to travel beyond the speed of light safely and comfortably with no ill effect. The okay. inverse hyperbolic field also cancels inertial effects. The people inside of the slip wave bubble will float and be weightless even when the spacecraft performs very high accelerations and direction changes. So All no no gravity inside. No, not unless they somehow artificially create it within that, which I think would be a bad idea. But according to what I'm seeing, when they're in flight at this high speed, there's no gravity in there. It would be lethal. You cannot so have anything inertial going on okay. above the speed of light. It would be catastrophic. It would be instantaneous death. Yeah. The, all of the lens tra transmer transformation effects are canceled this is it's essential or they can't survive the trip time passes slightly faster inside of the slip wave mean? yeah that's a unique thing and i can explain why that is okay. this is a experiment that i propose that i'm probably going to do myself at some point uh this should do the trick um going to set up a lab and do this myself yeah, that's what you were mentioning. Yeah, I'm just tired of waiting for somebody to figure it out. All right, here's <laughs> I'm showing. I'm showing. Uh, here's the magnetic coils, and this, this is a a starship, a cigar-shaped starship. Small nice. steering coils here. Uh, first coil, second, third, fourth, fifth. Notice the intensity of the current increases at the rear end of the ship. Yeah, I do. Makes, it makes the ship move in this direction. It's buoyant within space. Uh, and this is how they do it in deep space. And they're going to go any speed they want. All they got to do is ramp up the current fields to a certain levels so that they cancel or eliminate or very, not eliminate entirely, 
diminish greatly permittivity and permeability within this area. Space thins out. They can go any speed they desire up to and almost infinitely fast, which I do not recommend. I don't even know if that's possible. Probably not. But you can certainly go a million times the speed of light or 10 million times the speed of light. Whatever you need to do, uh, if you have a strong enough magnetic field, you can do it. Wow. So this is what it's going to require for us to visit other universes, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to go outside of this universe. Now, going back to a near-death experiencer who did uh, travel beyond our universe, he was curious and he wanted to see what it looked like. He mm -hmm. actually went outside of our universe and looked back at it that looked like a little ball of light. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he could see it all by itself. But then when he looked around to the left or right, he saw other universes at great distances. I mean, distances that are inconceivable. <laughs> They're so large. If you want to get to those universes, there's two ways. Astral uh, travel. <laughs> stargate, yeah, stargate technology or faster than the speed of light and you're going to have to go millions and millions of times faster to get there and uh, that's the only two ways i can think of and i think stargate technology would be a more efficient way and i think a lot of people once they get into this uh technology uh they they uh use that higher level uh technology of the stargate technology and they travel interdimensionally and and uh, costs universes and time and can travel virtually anywhere they want. So, yeah, I do want us to talk about, and we can, well, we can also cover this in the, the science and the spirituality aspect of it with the Stargate, with the time travel. I mean, we can totally do that at that point too, but I want to, if I, I don't know, I guess we've got a few minutes to be able to, uh, I want you to wrap up, of course, your, you know, uh, the PowerPoint, but as well, uh, what would be, based on what you know through your research, uh, I'd like to get your feedback on time travel, how close are we to that, and then also Stargate in relation to that. How is Stargate time travel? Is it yeah. Stargate kind of doing that? Yes, it is exactly yeah. how they do it. The time yeah. travel, interdimensional, yeah. inter universal, intergalactic, uh, it's mm -hmm. probably the most efficient way to move about the universe. So we now we talk about that. Yeah, we'll go more in, in depth with that. And then the other thing that I was going to mention, which is which kind of crosses over really into the spirituality aspect of it, is that the astral travel, which I've been doing as a kid and ha I've had so many NDs. I, I it was not like, oh, I work really years in this meditative state. <laughs> I just kind of go there. So I do that at night when I dream. I get I think it's because I'm bored a lot of times. But uh, but that is also um, I've been in other I visualize a portal that's protected by, you know, white light, angels, all that. And then I just go and I've been to all sorts of different um, places. And that's also a form of travel because I've come back with right. evidence that I've told people and they're like, yeah, you know, uh, me too. Or or th there's there it can be also evidential. So that is another way is, is, is right. by telepathic. You know, and also astral bringing our light body or, you know, not to get too involved with that, but a light body along with our telepathic. So to me, the more advanced uh, alien technologies would be where you have the the light, we're beings of light, and you would have telepathic yes. intention with that. Yes, that's pr proven. I've, I've talked to uh, Susie Hansen and that's exactly what they do. They steer their ship, they control their ship with psychic right. abilities right and they can do some really nifty stuff like travel right through solids like the planet earth um oh. i don't even have a way of conceiving that the how they do that but it could be purely uh, of a psychic nature because there are many reports from uh, abductees that they are seen moving through walls and windows and, and yeah. other solid objects as if that's they were true. nothing that's so, true so, yeah, you're talking about a highly advanced uh, spiritual uh, method, a paranormal yeah. method of, of um, moving and, you know, or moving just your consciousness. That's it. These other realms. 
Yes, and that's, that's no technology that I've known. Well, it would be, I guess it would be considered, um, well, we could just call it for now an alien technology, but it is to me telepathic, if you want to say psychic, mind to mind, or it's more than that. It was uh, when I had Preston Denton on here, who's uh, done a lot of UFO research and so forth. He's like 27 books on this. He said that they know, they, they look for that the higher advanced technologies, uh, if you want to call them aliens, non-humans, they look for people that are psychic or that are open-minded and they commute, they like that and they communicate. It was funny. He was telling me they also like uh, civil rights or uh, people that are into human rights, kind of like Betty and Barney Hill. And he was into, but yeah, they, they, they said they know who you are by your intuitively uh, through, through your signature, through your, through intention, through the mind. So uh, that's why you have like the Stephen Greer that has that program. What is the ED5 or the CD? Is it what is CE5 where you sit outside and you put the intention? Uh, but everything's intention anyway, right? Or, yes. you know, my intention is yes. to be surrounded by uh, supportive, loving people that are interesting. So I am, you know, it, it, it really is about intention, what you pull toward you. So uh, why would that be any different? But they have a way, I think, of, of uh, mastering it into a technology. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Imagine what we'll be able to do in another m million years of evolution. I bet you our heads get kind of bigger, too. And, you know, and we have <laughs> tremendous, you know, telekinetic powers and, and all yeah. kinds of uh, capabilities that really come from the source. We yeah. just have, they just have a way of utilizing and connecting to those higher abilities. Yes. And and I, I think that it's, it's a bad rap, uh, not to be too off topic, but it's a bad rap for a lot of the uh, non-human ETs, whatever. Not all of them are these abductee types or, you know, the, the bad aliens or the ones you hear about or the scary, you know, uh, yeah. They also help and heal. And I do think they probably do have an agenda. And, you know, so one theory is that the DNA, they need that because they were once human like us and they kind of screwed it up. They're trying to understand emotion and come back to that. But I'm talking about the higher level, the ones that are much higher vibration, that their bodies are not the same as us. They're not they're not like um, meat, meat, uh, flesh, yeah. organs, their density. Their density is different. They're uh, more of what we would consider a light being, but it is substance. And to me, that's fascinating because they're able to do things with these light bodies, much like someone who's had an NDE that travels and remembers that we can't do. So uh, we didn't even get into to fractal lighting, but maybe that'll happen with the, uh, the Stargate and so forth, because, um, you know, I would like to to get into that we'll do some of that maybe if you'd be willing i know you've got to head out on uh the next episode where we get into the spirituality aspect how we met um how i accidentally channeled einstein for you what was it five years ago and i was like i'm not doing this and you're like go ahead or go ahead i didn't know you were completing his your whole life was completing his work and more i didn't know that and to me it's been an amazing journey and the fact that you want to share that with people because it's yes it's kind of a miracle and then tesla keeps showing up and and you know this is a this it's is all a miracle to me it's amazing it's amazing to me and the fact that i trust god so much that i'm willing i, I don't have fear I'm like oh because to me this is what i tell people you know everybody that knows me knows i'm a big fan of jesus but over on the other side at this higher level vibrational love vibration whatever there's religious leaders, there's famous, uh, there's poets, there are scientists. Why wouldn't they have influence and be inspiring and helping us here? Why wouldn't they? It doesn't make any sense. Why not? And it comes through in readings evidentially all the time uh, that when you're studying someone and their life works, they know it and they appreciate it. And to me, it's just, it's, to me, it's, it, it's that it, love doesn't end. And, and that, that type of right. love, it, it doesn't have to be just family and friends. It could be admiration that Einstein has for you doing his work. Yeah, we could talk about that on the next episode. 
Well, thank you so much for your time, Mark. This was an incredibly fascinating. And the next time we're, we're going to, we're not going to do the PowerPoint. This is yeah. so amazing to, to digest. That's why people can watch it again. And then we're going to go into some, uh, the spiritual, the spirituality behind the science on this and then our interactions. And we'll try to bring you up today. we got to work on that. This, this is still a work in progress. So look, yes. much love to you. And you really are making a, a big difference in humanity and I just, uh, your work is amazing. Uh, I'm a non-scientist, so the best that I can understand it, it blows my mind. Mm -hmm. And just keep up the good work and um, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for this interview. I appreciate you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>